topic we are going to discuss right now, which is uh, Scient DLM. It's the first corporate interaction of the day. Uh, for Q2, the company saw very strong revenue growth, although their margin took a hit because of elevated material and employee cost. Anthony Montalbano, who is the CEO at Scient DLM, joins us now to talk more about their uh, performance. So this was, what, a 72% growth that they saw in their top line in Q, uh, Q2 FY24. Uh, Anthony, can you just take us through that? What is the expectation as we move along and which are the segments? I mean, you have an exposure across segments, right? Whether it's aerospace, defense, industrials. Which are the segments where you saw maximum amount of growth this time? And is this a, a run rate that you can sustain through the course of FY24? Yeah. Yes, very nice to be here. And yeah, we did have a very strong quarter as far as uh, growth goes. This was a record quarter in terms of uh, you know, overall uh, the business we've delivered uh, in the history of Scient DLM. And so the primary sectors that a lot of that came from is aerospace and defense, and then followed by industrial and medical. And we continue to see strong momentum in those segments. Those are our core focus segments. And uh, you know the, the outlook uh, in these sectors uh, for our clients continues to be quite strong. Mm -hmm. Hi, Anthony. Anthony. Sorry. Anthony, on aerospace and defense, I remember uh, sort of <clears throat> having a conversation earlier. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, with the science management before the, uh, before the spin out, etc., and I remember uh, them telling us that this is the segment which is entering a multi-year boom. Uh, and, uh, you know, this was, a, I think, about three or four months back. Has that started? Is, are we start is that the reflection of the numbers that you've posted in this segment? And what's the sustainable rate of growth here yeah. for the segment? Yeah, yeah the, the, the cycles in these segments are quite long, right? Especially the aerospace side of things. And so, uh, really, we've come out of a down cycle and we do see, uh, you know, a multi-year boom where there's a lot of investment happening. Uh, that includes investment in support of uh, upgrades to uh, existing product. And then, as you've seen in the headlines, there's been uh, considerable uh, product purchase made in terms of aircraft, which drives the associated, um, you know, industry uh, drive there. So uh, this is an area we're strongly positioned in terms of the uh, areas of that through our clients and then also just uh, the nature of the programs that we're engaged in uh, are very much long term uh, programs, often running 10, 15 years. So this is something we've had in our order book and we continue to see the momentum and this is uh, what we're continuing to deliver on today. Hi, Anth Hi Anthony, good morning. This is Nigel on this side. Uh, you know, we'd like to talk business and its impact as well. There's an unfortunate yes. conflict going on in Israel and that could have some repercussions for your business as well. So could you tell us what kind of revenues were you estimating to come in from Israel? And does that get altered because of the ongoing conflict? I mean, we all pray and hope that everything settles down. And, you know, from a business perspective or from a humanity perspective, we don't want any of this. But if for your business, what's the impact? Yes, uh, it's a, you know, clearly a, a very top of mind situation. I was uh, personally uh, in Israel about a month ago, uh, meeting with our key clients and stakeholders. Uh, you know, the, the situation, of course, has uh, changed significantly. We have reached out to uh, all our key clients and just about all of our key suppliers in the region. I think only two that maybe we have not directly connected with. Um, so that's like two out of 30 plus. So the feedback at this point is uh, quite positive where no supply disruption uh, is expected. And so it is pretty optimistic from that point of view. You know, that said, we are uh, very cognizant of what's happening in the region, potential impact that one okay. might guess in terms of logistics and other aspects of that. So right. we are continuing to monitor it uh, very closely right now. Early indication uh, is that, you know, it is uh, no, you have no change in any guidance. And uh, but again, you know, there's a lot happening there that uh, we, we have our thumb on the pulse on. Right, Anthony, to answer your question about 
Uh, Anthony Alvaoli yeah. are guiding for around 100 crores, right, of business from Israel. Uh, I, think, I think that was the ballpark number. So you, you'll stick to that. Uh, about, yeah, we, we, see, uh, we see about 20% of our business uh, at, at this point in time coming through there and uh, in one form or another. So uh, that, is, uh, that, that is associated with some of the uh, defense business that we have. And so uh, mm. that, that will also change over time. Right. Uh, so, uh, uh, Anthony, just trying to understand a little bit better, you'll end this year closer around 1,000 crores of revenues, uh, you know, going by the run rate that you've done. Uh, last year, did I think 850 crores odd. So out of the 1,000 crores approximately, you'll get to 1,000 crores first of all, right? So we, we are forecasting, uh, yeah, we're, 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 we're looking at a growth rate of, you know, right now is a run rate that, that we're on for our business. We, we plan to continue with that run rate. Uh, we're going to continue to drive uh, growth in, you know, the range of... Uh, 30 to 50 percent, maybe 40 percent plus, uh, depending how 40 percent. Okay, and right. out of that, 20 percent, 20 percent comes in from Israel. Uh, some of the supply can come out of Israel. Uh, I would okay. say somewhere, somewhere around 20 percent. There could be some impact. Uh, you know, if you look at the supply chain aspects of it. Uh, but that's that's the current makeup of it over, overall. So probably somewhere just shy of 20% might be uh, related to uh, supply chain uh, coming out of Israel. Okay, so 20% comes in from Israel. Of course, we hope and pray that the situation doesn't uh, escalate further there. But, uh, you know, coming back to your own business, you also raised 700 crores in the IPO for inorganic growth opportunities. Have you been able to identify anything yet? and any kind of timeline that you're looking at for acquisitions? Uh, so, again, we actually have made uh, quite a bit of uh, traction in that regard. We are in discussion uh, with, uh, uh, I'd say, uh, a, a, few, a few key opportunities. And so we would like to be in a position where uh, in the coming uh, quarters, uh, we would be able to uh, potentially announce something which would uh, broaden our uh, capabilities and footprint that we can extend to our uh, current clients as well as uh, potentially open up uh, some other areas uh, that we can expand globally. So, so uh, th there is some positive momentum there. And as we get sure. further along, we discuss specifics there. That's interesting. So you're saying over the next yes. couple of quarters, uh, two to four quarters perhaps, you can close in on something and you've identified a few opportunities. Just two more questions on that. Uh, are you including that in the 40% growth that you're looking at for FY24 or, or not? No. And once, no. Okay, you're not. Yes. Got it. And what are the opportunities, which are the areas which, where you see maximum opportunity for inorganic acquisitions? Yeah, so so all our numbers are are organic that, that we are putting out. So inorganic would definitely add uh, to that. And you know our core as far as the types of uh, inorganic pursuits that we look at, it, it really is along the lines of the low volume, high mix, high value, uh, air and defense, industrial, medical, and um, and then again you know we we have. We have capacity and capability in India. A lot of our clients in terms of number of count are Western based. So as we look at uh, providing uh, solutions uh, closer uh, to those clients, uh, that opens up more business potential there uh, in new products. And, okay. um, and that's part of the strategy that we're moving forward with them. Very quickly, Anthony, you can do eight and a half percent margin so you can improve it very quickly. Yeah, so, you know, from a margin perspective, uh, you know, a lot of that comes down to uh, business mix. And so, uh, you know, this last quarter, we had a, we had a, a lot of revenue associated with uh, some lower margin product. And, uh, and then also we have made some investments uh, in go-to-market and people. And uh, right. again, when you have this type of business growth, you have to make those investments. All right, Anthony, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much for your time. Good speaking with you. And uh, pleasure, as always, here on CBC TV 18. We'll take a very quick commercial break.